Well, hello, beautiful. I am offering this video on finding your safety because I look after so many different clients and I actually get asked this by other people all the time. Like what is kind of the biggest, in inverted commas, issue that people come to you with? And I know that most people have never learned how to feel safe in the skin that they're in and often through different layers of dis-ease to all different degrees and intensities within each person across their lifespan, there are layers of disconnection from self, like a disconnection from sense of trust in self or body or both and different layers of disassociation, like not really knowing where you are in time and space that can make it really challenging to even know what safety feels like. Like, what does it mean to you when I say, find your safety? So I want to break down a couple of these things and explain why it's important. Like, why would you believe that feeling your own safety inside of you could be important? I view it a little bit like, think about a little kid and how valuable, <laughs> like massively valuable, it is for a small child to feel safe and secure. What does that provide them? I mean, in my point of view, it provides them a sense of curiosity, like they can kind of go on adventures and discover things about themselves, about life, about their expression, their creativity, their truth, their authenticity, their vulnerability, and feel accepted, feel like there's a sense of belonging. And in that sense of belonging, it's like literally they belong to more parts of themselves in any moment. Therefore, they belong much less to the opinions or beliefs or conditions of others. Yeah. So as adults, I kind of view us a lot of the time as just grown up children. <laughs> have similar needs to children and obviously we've got different you know roles and responsibilities and different aspects of life including a whole lot of beliefs and conditions around how we value ourselves love ourselves and the different stressors that that kind of brings into our world and we often look to the world to provide safety to us or we look to others to provide safety to us and we get cross or annoyed or frustrated or sad or angry if that doesn't happen. And yet we're in this process where we haven't learned how to give that to ourselves. And so I feel like it's a little bit unfair to look to it from, from others when we ourselves don't really know how to embrace it and sustain it and cultivate it within ourselves, finding safety is like a relationship, yeah? It's like learning a, a new language of your own body. And, you know, have you ever, do you remember learning how to ride a bike or to go swimming or to learn a new language or to play an instrument or to play a sport? Did you just do it one time and you're like, great, <laughs> sweet, I've got this? Or did it take some practice? some recognition of prior learning, some familiarity, not just with your brain and knowing what to do, but your body. And that's what finding the safety is also about, like building a relationship with a familiarity so that sooner or later, and it depends on the person, it depends on practice, it depends on past history, it depends on your intention, it depends on many different things you know, what your pro process will be, your progress, um, and what is time, whether it's fast or slow. <laughs> but what I wanted to say is that we each have our own timing and our own languaging and our own discovery of what safety is to us and how we choose to embody it and form a relationship with it so that it can end up just being a natural, more of a natural state of being, more of this familiar state of being that you get to carry around with you because it's in your body wherever you go, whomever you speak to, whatever interaction is arising. When you've practiced feeling the safety enough in your own body, I have found in my own experience and many of my clients also have this same experience that they can pretty quickly in amongst the flux and the chaos of life, find their own inner peace. 
And it doesn't mean that it's a sense of happiness. That's not what finding the safety is. It's not, you know, there's no kind of end point of joy or pleasure or bliss or happiness related to it. It's more that there is an availability for resilience, courage to continue, and an awareness of self, an acceptance of self, a peacefulness within self, and a trust of being able to navigate from moment to moment to moment. And that trust of being able to navigate moment to moment to moment, what would that mean in terms of your awareness of time and space? For me, it means that you're very aware of the present moment. So the remembered threats of the past and any anticipations of threats from the future are not clouding out the present moment, yeah? When you can navigate a sense of safety in yourself and you're belonging to more parts of yourself in any given moment, I believe you are more present. And that's part of the practice that I want to present to you (laughs) today. It's only going to be a two-minute practice and a roundabout and... It is something that if you choose to flow into this as often as possible, whenever the mood strikes, and maybe even if the mood hasn't struck, this is what I believe helps us as adults re-navigate our sense of confidence and agency and autonomy and um, this innovative problem-solving capacity because we're not so hyper-vigilant and stuck in a stress response that we can't quite think properly. We're not so overwhelmed anymore. We've actually got more energy to respond in choice the way that we want to rather than react from an unconscious place of trigger and of threat and of hyper-vigilance. And when we allow ourselves to really notice that right now there is an absence of threat, like if you are watching me right now, I know that there must be an absence of threat for you right now. And how is your body feeling that? And what is your body noticing? And I'm bringing this to your awareness right now because if you haven't caught up with that awareness yet, your mind-body system is unconsciously scanning for you the whole time, checking for threats. And the more potential threats that you have perceived in your past or are anticipating in your future, the more hypervigilant your system is. And that takes a lot of energy, doesn't it? And how would you rather use that energy? Would you rather use it to build a better relationship or to have better work habits or to you know, uh, have more joy and pleasure and bliss and fun and curiosity and creativity and compassion. Like there's a lot of things that energy can do for us. It can help us live our best lives. And so if you want to flick the switch on what's been draining your energy, finding the safety can certainly be a big, big helper in that, which is why I wanted to share this video with you today. So To move through this practice with me, all I am going to suggest that you do is to, I'm sitting down right now and it might be nice for you to sit down, but you could also do this practice standing up. You could also do this practice fully lying down. Honestly, whatever feels right for you right now. And all I'm going to ask is for you to feel the support of whatever it is that's underneath you. If it's just on your feet... You're feeling the support of, you know, maybe you've got shoes on, maybe you don't. But just imagine feeling the support of the whole earth is holding you right now. Or for me, I've got, you know, like the earth is holding me, the floor is holding me, a chair is holding me, my bio mat is holding me, you know, my buttocks are holding me. You know, there's an alignment of my my posture, all of these different bones and tendons and ligaments and blood flow and my breath, like all of these different things in my body are supporting me in this moment to sit here. For you, it might be standing there or lying down there. I'm just going to ask for you to notice particularly one place in your body that you can feel the most support. And just take a moment just to marinate in that, like just... Allow yourself 
to be with that part of you, an inside part of you, a bodily part of you. So not just a conceptual thought. I'm really asking you to feel it in your body. Where specifically can you feel the support underneath you? And what would it be like to either imagine your breath flowing to that place or maybe placing a hand on that place if that feels good? And if you can't really feel any part of you at the moment, I just want to say that that's okay. And it also might be even more helpful to work with a practitioner. I support clients with this kind of process, but it might be a really beautiful thing to pick up a cushion and to place a cushion on the part of you that you just feel like you've got no access to. And sometimes it could just be nice just to hug a cushion. So if you're feeling kind of numb, I also just want to support anybody that might not really be feeling much right now just to hold a pillow, hug a pillow, like bring that into the core of you. And you might want to start this practice again. Just noticing where in your body specifically you feel most supported right now. And can you allow yourself to kind of expand into that place, into that awareness and just track what's there. So track different sensations does it feel warm or soft or open or flowing what's present for you in this place that feels like it's got some support and now just looking around the environment that you're in I'm just going to ask your eyes to come to rest on one object or being or picture or plant that you find beautiful or pleasurable or nice or comforting to look at. And just allow yourself to feel, where do you feel that picture or that plant or that photo or that statue or that crystal or whatever it is that you have landed on that tree? Where do you feel that in your body? And can you allow that part of your body to recognize it's here? feeling the pleasure and the beauty of that particular object and also just notice that place that you originally landed on that was feeling supported and what might happen now is that you might notice a place come up in you that you might want to constrict often when we bring in safety if we're not very familiar with it often that first constriction can actually be a thought or like this is boring or I've got to go and do this now or you know there'll be some sort of inner chatter alongside that inner chatter often there's a place in our body that wants to constrict against the potential of the threat not yet arrived or a remembered threat from the past so we're kind of losing the present moment and that's so fine it's just noticing where the constriction is in, in your body And would it be possible, could you imagine it being possible for you just to pendulate, meaning like move from that constricted part and to either both or one of those parts, that the part that felt the beautiful object or the part that was feeling most supported before? Can you pendulate your awareness between any constriction in your body that might have arisen with this feeling of inviting in more safety? inviting in the pleasure of an object in the present moment in this room, time and space, and the feeling of support that your body is currently experiencing or a part or parts of your body. And so just allowing your breath to to move between each place or space. And it's a beautiful thing just to notice that you can have expansion and safety and support and constriction in your one body at one time. And that's so fine. And so just releasing this practice now, and I just wanted to share another couple of things. Imagine being able to kind of find, even if it was only fleeting, like just that place of space that place and space of safety inside of you, that feeling of support inside of you. And if you were to notice them a little more, just a little more, maybe every day, or maybe you could practice every hour, just kind of coming back into this feeling of like, ah, 
yeah, I feel that here and this is what it feels like and really noticing the nuances of what it specifically feels like and kind of tracking how it might move or shift other parts of your body around it as you notice even more of it. And then imagine moving into another moment of your life with that safety more anchored in you. How would you respond, act, be from that inner place of safety and reassurance and connection to self with your next email or phone call or conversation or hopping in the car and going to another place or creating an invitation or whatever the next being activity of your life might be. Imagine what could be different if you were holding this safety. There might be a different posture, a different breath, a different tone of voice, a different thought pattern, yeah? Like we've just created this understanding of where we are in time and space and a greater sense of belonging to self and comfortability in self. So could you think that that might change? Could you feel into the fact that that might change some of your next steps? And so imagine practicing that more often. So this is just a very simple, quick intro, and I really hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please leave me a comment. It's very helpful for me. Please share it with someone else and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much.